is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ Roundtable. Yet another great episode coming up here. And also, we got a lot of stuff going on here. And today, we are have another guest DJ in here. Uh, first and first, we have Tommy back again, yet again. You know, hey, Tommy, what's up? And then we have Terry the Moose, all you from beautiful Texas. You probably seen him on YouTube. You probably seen his shorts of him with the moose in the woods, and then him yelling "Damn, bro, that the moose is loose" and stuff like that. Oh, oh, if you've oh. seen those shorts, that is, this is the man right here who does those shorts, and he's here tonight to answer your questions and answer your your questions, your critique, criticisms, and comments, like everyone else here. If you are watching this on Twitch. Make sure you smash that follow button and follow the channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, first thing first, you're watching on YouTube, you're missing it out on Twitch. You should watch us live on Twitch. You can ask questions at real time. But if you are watching on YouTube, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. If you, if you haven't done so, subscribe, then why aren't you? Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you know when we have a lot when we go with new episodes or I do a live on YouTube or other uploads on YouTube. So make sure you do that. It'd be greatly appreciated. And I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. So first thing first, I'm going to get a little political. And I don't mean politics like politics, politics. I'm talking about DJ politics. And this is the DJ politics that everyone always loves is at, when you're at a wedding show or you're at another kind of an event and there's other DJs, vendors, and so forth and so on. That, you know, make it sometimes a little bit hard to work with because the fact that they're either, you know, not easy to work with or something else going on. How do you overcome that? How do you overcome a another DJ in another room who is blasting their subwoofer so loud that it's overpowering your system? Or you're trying to load in and they're blocking you from loading in? Or... They're outright, you know, like Brittley, ha Brittley has had DJs that uh, tell a uh, tall tale that uh, don't uh, have a, uh, a kernel of truth to it. So how do you overcome that, photographer, videographer, or a vendor you owner um, that may or may not uh, be nice to you? And it's, it's the politics of do you smile and, you know, shake hands and... Uh, try to be nice or do you say, Hey, you know what? Uh, I I'm going to do my own thing and I I'll leave you alone. Or how do you overcome that? So I'm going to start with DJ Brentley. Cause uh, again, he has some uh, great things going up there in the beautiful uh, city of lacrosse and also a beautiful state of Wisconsin. Uh, besides the uh, crazy people on uh, blue cam on YouTube, he also has a lot of stuff going on there between venues uh, and bars and clubs. So I know you got to deal with a bunch of different people. How do you overcome those that I'm going to say politics of being a uh, good DJ? Well, one, I'm not going to play into it anymore, you know, ever. There's no, I mean, I might take, you know, I, I will, I will sit to make one note that I may take an occasional poke at, you know, a certain DJ and you only a few people and, other DJ will know what I'm poking about. And otherwise, everybody <coughs> thinks it's just your atypical, obnoxious, it's kind of one of my posts. But from vendors to venues, the whole nine yards, I'm not, I will go above and beyond to be as nice as I possibly can. And uh, he, uh, a friend of, uh, con this came up in a conversation about being nice, like in He's from the South, and the one comment he said, well, God bless you, and things like that. Being nice, but they know you're not pleased with them. And I didn't realize until we did a – I did my wedding on Saturday and then went to an expo on Sunday. And Saturday, the, I didn't know what photographer I was working with, and my a couple had forgotten to tell me. And because it's the Cargill room where I was at on Saturday, I know they've spent a pretty penny, plus the family who books the whole thing. 
uh, owned one of the bigger construction companies in the area. So I knew it was all going to be a certain photographer, you know, like certain level of vendor. So I walk in, I'm like, oh, it's you. She's like, oh, you do what you got to do today. I'll follow your lead. And a lot of that can't start, you know, conversation came up with other vendors at the expo. So more often than not, I guess because of what I I do up here, at least on the wedding side of it, most vendors will be like, yeah, you, you got this under control. We'll take, you take the lead and walk us through the day, which is really nice. And those who are a little bullheaded, like rustic occasions, I was nice that entire t- day until the very end of the night. And at that point, I knew I, the wedding was over and I wasn't going to be coming back to that venue ever. So I felt I could kind of be a prick at the end of the night when he was dishing it out again. When it comes to the club aspect of it, and actually Tommy and I were talking about this the other day, the ego thing. It's why I'm kind of avoiding certain cities that I don't want to get into a measuring contest in certain markets and really, you know, get somebody's panties in a bunch because I picked up a gig in one city and blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, how's he doing this now? He's not that good or blah, 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 whatever. I would rather focus on where I'm not going to walk into something like that where everybody's a little bit cooler, the entire scene, so to speak. They're like, oh, yeah, we all help each other out around here. And lacrosse is fairly like that. I mean, there's a little BS involved in it. But that's the other reason why I've avoided certain cities and certain venues, just because I don't want to get into that game and attitude problem. I've got money, you know, in this treating it like a business, not, you know, taking my ego and all that out of the, the equation, treating all of it like a business. There's no room for that. And I have bills to pay. I don't need to play that game. I will go get booked somewhere else who appreciates what I'm doing. And move forward like that so that's my and it's just no matter what i could be raging ready to put my fist through a window or punch a brick wall but i'll never let you see it well all you will see at at best yeah i will get kind of cold and you know very frank or blunt with people but i'm not going to get you know snippy or really let an attitude show that i'm upset you got so unprofessional and you don't know who is going to be watching. And they might, wa- like, you might you know, get booked because of how you handled a very bad entitled situation, so to speak. Someone might see, like, wow, they put up with all of that. They are really nice people. That's somebody I want to do business with. And that's been my, moreover, I'd rather help every one of my DJ buddies out, be nice as to everyone in my community and those out, you know, that we work with, talk to, whatever, and make sure we all come up and progress like we should, rather than just batch somebody and beat somebody down so they don't because they're not coming up to speed. I definitely like the other side of that. And that's the thing is that, you know, it, it's it's always hard. And someone like yourself who has come from the music side of things, being a musician. And doing thrash and guitar and someone who could probably smash a guitar on a stage, no problem, and can be that kind of person has grown into the professional it is now and has matured. And again, you don't want to, not something you don't want to regress back to that, that, that stage. But also, you don't want to have that reputation because you're representing your business now and yeah. you're representing yourself. Exactly. And part and parcel. That's why I also, you know, I mean, if you look at my social media, you'll tell you. Yeah, he probably used to be a pretty big ass clown, but he's got a kid. He's a family oriented DJ, but still keeps the fun side of himself because it's part of what he does. Oh yeah, and that's kind of like the whole selling point of what I'm pushing for weddings anyway. And that's that's the part that you, you know being professional uh, is very important. And speaking of the South, um, I do have two DJs from the South. Um, I think I can go to Texas, who I'm sure they have that slogan, bless your heart, which is usually oh. when you hear that slogan, oh. it means that you are oh. a dumb dumb <laughs> and that, you know, I feel sorry for you. You're doing something stupid or something wrong. Bless your heart is all. Why do you hear that from a solid person? I know that they are smacking you in the face. Well, you know, me and smacking your face. Or you're doing kindly with a smile. And. Sir, down in Texas, when you run into 
be it venues, other DJs, whoever, um, and you had to play the political game. And I use the air quotes here because we're not talking bad politics. We're talking DJ politics. Um, how do you how do you handle how do you handle those uh, people who are being rude to you or are hard <laughs> to work with? Okay, so I really haven't had like to share venues or anything with other DJs. I had a wedding coordinator. I wanted to snatch the wig off her head. Um, she was just like on top of me the whole night. And it was like, okay, I got to use the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and um, I don't know. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a praying man. So I went into the bathroom and asked the Lord for some strength so I wouldn't have to snatch her wig off my head. And when I went back, I just had this smile on my face the whole night. And then when it was over, she comes up to me and she goes, you did good. I was like, yeah, but you kept on. In my head, I'm like, yeah, but because you kept on getting on me about stupid stuff. You got the cue ready. You got this ready. You got that ready. And I'm just like, everything's ready. It's all in there. I'm ready to go. All I have to do is push. I hate weddings. I'm more of a party DJ, but I'll do a wedding if I have to. Um, I, to deal with people, I have to have that better mentality to them. If they're going to come up to me all angry, I'm going to have to show them uh, positive niceness um, because of what I learned um, when I started my business. I started from scratch. Nobody showed me. I didn't even know about YouTube in 2019. So it's just like everything that I learned on how to DJ, I put together myself. So um, it's a professionalism and it's a ma mannerism, and it's, uh, I think it's business etiquette. Very important, yes, it's, it's a, very, yeah, very important. Yeah. And no one should be treating anyone, un you know, unprofessionally, especially working together. Yeah. One yeah. of the things um, I'm reading in the chat here <laughs> um, from DJ Mikey Mike in Pennsylvania, uh, he said, I usually talk to management uh, to kindly take care of the problem before I do. Um, he said, we need a DJ for the Northeast. Uh, I'm working on that. I, I'm always, I'm working on that. And then wedding planners are a waste of time and money and just aggravate us DJs. Not all wedding planners are that way. Uh, I work with a couple. Oh, no. I work with I a refuse. couple, which are really good. And I, I also, Tracy, for intense, is wedding coordinator. You know, she coordinates. So I live with one kind of, sort of. So not all, I, all wedding coordinators are the same. Unfortunately, you probably run into some bad ones who, <laughs> don't know how to communicate properly. And that's the bad part. Um, you're going to say, Brentley? I definitely run into some very bad ones, but I'm really lucky again. And this goes to the venues that I'm frequently at. If you're at these venues, you are spending a pretty penny. And nine times out of 10, if you don't use the venue coordinator necessarily, or you want them, but you want something a little extra, there are like four, now five coordinators that I am more than willing to work with any day of the week, anytime they call, hands down, because again, and this is something we were selling, a point we were selling at the expo over the weekend, not every DJ is gonna be willing to work hand in hand with you know coordinator, photographer, video, to ensure we produce the best result and the one our couples are looking for. And even if you don't get along with them, and I've worked with some bad coordinators where I'm like, just step aside, get out of my way, basically. I will handle everything from here on out because you're not keeping up with this. And, and that's, hard. that's hard. That's always hard to deal with. And they weren't thrilled with it. But once I did that, things started going correctly again from getting dinner back on schedule. I mean, I'm speeches after dinner back on schedule to dances and all that. But a lot of the coordinators that I'm blessed enough to work with, they they have it together and it's and they work with you to make sure it all goes smooth. Yeah. And that that's the thing is that, you know, again, you, there's good and bad. So like good and bad DJs, good, bad photographers, videographers, 
so forth and so on. There's people I have to work with, some people I don't want to work with. So I'm going to go to my other Southern DJ uh, in North Carolina. Uh, Jeff, do you use the phrase, bless your heart in uh, North Carolina, or is that uh, further south than you, sir? <laughs> no, that's an insult. And uh, no, I don't I use that only if I'm going to insult somebody. But um, no, I, I, I try not to use it unless, unless I want it to be turned around and uh, put back at me. Uh, but yeah, it, it's in North Carolina just as well. Very, very much so. Um, no, I, I usually, I, I, I think, you know, most wedding planners or event planners or, you know, any, any of the, the trades, you know, we're all in the same boat trying to make the event a success, you know, and some people just don't know how to go about that. And sometimes they need to be steered in the right direction. You know, they think they're doing the best for the bride or the best for, you know, the event or the venue or whatever. Um, and they, and they, they seem sometimes get so narrowly focused that they forget about, okay, this is not going to work, uh, for somebody else or one of the other trades. If we try to, you know, point something in this direction, you know, you've got to make the boat, you got to make the ship sail, you know, and it, it takes a, uh, it takes a, a crew, you know, everybody's got to do their best and you've got to work with each other. And that's one thing I try to, you know, get across to the other trades, um, you know, I'm here not only, you know, to make this event a success, but I'm here to work with you and I'm not going to try and tell you how to do your job. Um, uh, if you need my help in any way, shape or form, I'll be glad to offer it. Um, please don't tell me how to do mine. Uh, I've done it, done it for a long time. I know how to do it. And my goal is to make this a success. And if it's a wedding, I want the bride. And the father of the bride, who's usually the, uh, you know, pulling the money out of the pockets, I want them to be very happy. And so at the end of the day, you know, that is the focus. And if you're not, if you're not uh, keeping that as your focus, then you probably have overstepped your bounds. So that's just my two cents. Very true. Very, very true. Very true, sir. Very true. And, you know, it, it's one of the things that, again, working with different people, be it, again, other DJs in other rooms, be it photographers, videographers, facility owners, bartenders, whoever. Again, like you said, Jeff, you hit the nail right in the head. You, you, you be professional and you take care of it and you, you do it. Uh, you know, I want to go to uh, as about as far east as I have right now for DJs, but also he's a great DJ in the greatest state of Ohio. Mr. Dixon there. Uh, what about you, sir? What about the politics of DJing with... Uh, all the other uh, vendors. How do you uh, how do you overcome the uh, people who are, you know, being brash and being you know obnoxious or telling you that, hey, you're doing it wrong. You need to do this. You know, put your speakers upside down or whatever they say. Uh, I haven't really ran into anybody like that. But also, when I show up to like doing DJ kind of um, events like weddings, all that, I usually have a um, a printed out um, itinerary, an outline. So it's almost like we huddle up once I get set up and I see them setting up, we get together and talk and make sure we got each other's back. So I haven't ran into that. My problem runs comes from um, being a church musician and when we have guests, um, um, choirs come in. So that's where all my my issues come in or when I do um, something like a school assembly, sometimes people tends to get in my way or forget that I have to do an assembly. I can't watch your class or this student. So that's where all my problems come from. As far as the DJing thing, so far I haven't ran into that. It's just more so, if anything, it would be somebody hosting a party that I do a favor for, and then they want the, the world, you know, that kind of stuff. So, Yeah, that can get you in a whole nother mess of trouble when the uh... You're trying to help someone out, be, you know, the good guy and not charge full price or donate or anything like that. And it, it's, it's, it's hard. It's very hard. So going back to Mike here, he said here in Northeastern Pennsylvania and EPA, the wedding planners are mostly, mostly killers of the wedding. Uh, he said, I worked with a wedding planner, uh, started sending the bridal party randomly uh, instead of the proper order. Then she told me that uh, the intro is completely wrong, um, that I should have introduced the bride and groom first for intros. 
Um, I don't think that's how it works. And Matt, uh, out there in California, uh, I know that, uh, you know, again, every area has a little uniqueness, but, uh, I don't think any area, including your area out there, does intros, bride and groom first, and then the wedding party. Usually it's wedding yeah. party, then bride and groom, correct? Wedding so, party, bride and groom. Uh, I always do least important people first, most important people last. Parents are not important, so uh, they're always first uh, in terms of, like, the wedding party. They're not really part of the wedding party. So parents first, if we even introduce parents, and then usually flower girl or ring bearer, and then, like, your least liked friends to your best man and uh, maid of honor. And then <laughs> I mean, I like, it's, it's a, like it's friends. A that I, I like you, but I don't like you as much as my best friend here. Who's going to uh... stand on the end. You're not going to put your best friend on the end. You're going to put your least liked friend who just made the cut for the wedding party on the end. Man, <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're just dropping the, <laughs> the hardness there. So They're what like... about you with politics there with the, uh, with a wedding planner or with a wedding coordinator, or did, if you ran into someone like this, what Mike ran into, yelling at you, saying that, no, you did the uh, intro uh -huh. in reverse. No, I've only had like two or three wedding planners that I just could not stand. One of them did not really, there was like same way. She just, the whole night was like, uh, I don't know what was, what was up her uh, behind, but she just had an out for me. And like, I was trying to like give the couple everything that they paid for. She's like, no, we need to do this now. We need to do this now. Let's do this now. I'm like, Lady, we need to set up the photo booth. Like you told me I'd have an hour during cocktail hour to set it up. No, we got to do intros now. And she just kept yelling and I just smiled and took it. I'm like, okay, great. But I know like if I see her name on there, I will tell the couple like, I, I mean, I, you, there's nothing we can really do. Like wh whoever they choose as a coordinator is who they're going to choose. You just have to like try to suck it up, I guess. Like I have one wedding coming up with a coordinator that was just awful and uh the couple is great but this coordinator was just when i had to deal with her before i don't know if she was like an off day but she missed so many cues and like couldn't find her the whole night maybe she subcontracted it to somebody i don't know because like what she what the couple is saying about their coordinator is not the same vibe i got so so with that right there, though, i don't yeah with that right there were a coordinator missing cues and stuff like do you help them out? Do you try to make them, you know, try and put them on the right path? Do you say, yeah, hey. I try to say like, I look at the schedule. I have the timeline in front of me. I'm like, Hey, uh, can we do this? Are we, you know, what, what are we looking at on time? And sometimes you just can't find them or when dancing starts and they're supposed to tell you when cake cutting happens. And then next thing you know, like cake is already cut and you didn't play the song because nobody told you that the cake was being cut in a separate room. You know, it's things like that that just make me look bad. I, I can't stand when another vendor makes me look bad that's what i hate more than anything because people are going to look at the dj it's always going to be the dj's fault like he's running the show so like if the coordinator makes me miss a cue or uh you know some other vendor is trying to talk to me while i'm doing intros or trying to mix like you know gotta you gotta know your place in this industry i think and like i don't bug i don't bug the band when they're in the middle of a song asking how many songs you have left like just like you wouldn't bug the dj when he's in the middle of like introducing somebody like saying that oh there's a change like you should have yeah so i don't know should communicate that earlier so we knew that so tommy but i know i one more thing i personally will not work a wedding if there's no coordinator we have that in our contract now that there must be a coordinator uh i will not work if i will not serve as coordinator i will not release tables i will not um organize people to get them like there needs to be a coordinator um and they should be professional. It says they should be professional. So I'm not like they need to be a real coordinator. It's just like there needs to be somebody. So like if, yeah. here's some here's something to think about. Your girlfriend, you could talk to her and again, I did Tracy. I could barely get her to do the photo booth. She doesn't want to <laughs> I could barely get her to do the photo booth and she's still but talk to her. Maybe maybe her. coordination is her thing. Maybe she's more organized and coordination. She's very organized, but she's not a good people. She's not a great, she's shy. So she's not a good, like, oh, open people person. That shy so, is no know. big deal. Tr Tracy was a little shy too, but she now, she her and I split MC work. She introduces the couples. You know, she introduces the people for speeches. I do the, you know, for grand interests and stuff like that. So it, it's a little bit of everything. So maybe, maybe talk to her, see what happens. You never know. So Tommy. I know you've done some weddings, you've done some uh, private events, and you've done some club stuff. So I'm going to ask you about the politics because you're more of a newer DJ. You've been doing it for a few years, and you now you got yourself you know more feet more wet 
in the club area and the uh, event arena, kind of like uh, Brett Lee's been doing for years. And you also you've done events and you've done both areas. Have you, you know, when you run into the person who is a uh, standoffish, what do you do? What do you, what, how do you overcome that? How do you do the politics of being a DJ? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just try to basically prove them that like everything's going to be handled professionally and that, you know, one thing that I've noticed that I've run into sometimes is that because of my age, I'm looked at as, you know, like less professional or more of a liability where people don't think that it's like, you know, you know, work out. Um, so I really try to just show them the product that I have and put things on as I normally would and everything runs smooth. I had one situation with a wedding coordinator. I don't even know if it was a contracted coordinator. It might have just been somebody from the venue. Uh, it was like a real like helicopter type coordinator. They were really trying to just like tell me to do everything at a certain time. Like everything had to be done their way. And like I really tried to just be respectful of it and, and do things in the way that they said. But there were a few things where uh, it just didn't work out like that. You know, dismissing tables. They wanted to do it slower. People were just starting to get up on their own. And then they're looking at me as if, you know, I'm the one that should be controlling that. And to a point, it's like, you know, some people are going to just do their own thing. And uh, like, there's, <laughs> there's only so much you can do. But uh, I haven't, I've been lucky to not have experienced too many, uh, like bad experiences like that. And even that one was really minor. And by the end of the night, like everything ended up being super smooth. Um but then even with like the club scene too, an issue I've run into like politics wise is just like trying to get a foot in the door at places can be tough because uh, places will have their resident DJs or their people that they always go with. It could be somebody that's been there for five, six years, maybe even longer. And even if you're bringing in something in that would be new and would probably connect with the audience that they have there, there's just some places that are like unwilling to try it out. So that that's tough for me. Sometimes I'd like to like play new venues and, play new spots but some spots are just pretty locked in with uh their current lineups and stuff but i guess it just takes some time yeah and th that's the thing is that the hard part when you do stuff you go places and i think it's not sound bad especially being in wisconsin they see you walk in with some white Sox stuff yes yeah. i have a white Sox calendar i'm a white Sox fan uh and tommy is too a white Sox fan as well i will say this time if you start looking more towards and this is something I should have told you when we were talking the other day, but pay attention to the college venues and the college towns because once every two to three years, every one of those college towns is going to lose some of their DJs. They're going to graduate and move on. And that's happening again this year for a couple of guys, which did two or three years ago for some of the bigger guys in town. So that might be one key to along with persistency of making sure you hit the right venues up on a regular basis, but paying attention to what venues, and they'll even post it. Hey, it's DJ X, Y, and Z's last weekend with us. You, yeah, you start you catching that, that. And then it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. There's some word of wisdom from a man who's been in the industry for a while, and even had been management for a while, too. So and That's why I don't mind releasing tables. So I was a GM of a venue, a music venue and an eatery. And Part and parcel, one, every DJ is like, I hate doing that, I hate doing it. You're losing a valuable opportunity to get, be it a minute, be it 30 seconds with a table, hey, you're, and not getting on the mic and doing it. But literally, I will go to every table. It's just a lot classier. But not only are you getting a moment in front of them, they, like, they might feel a little bit more comfortable to ask you about a song later or on the spot. Do you have this? And this is when you can actually let your personality shine because some, you know, oh, I'm not allowed to play that. Sorry, they told me I can't and I won't take your money to do so. Or, you know, you can get a little cute with it. And every time you're able to do that, it gives you a better opportunity for a referral and to have people more interested in dancing to what you're throwing to them. Part and parcel with that. I mean, well, never mind. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. <laughs> but, Again, Brett Lee and myself, we release tables. Tommy, you uh, you go up at each table and release a table? Uh, I've done it once before where I had to go to each, and there's been times, too, where it's over the mic. Really just kind of what I'm asked to do. Again, Even I if they do... ask you to do it over the mic? No. 
and you can put a wedding coordinator in their place just by saying that's something that's inappropriate for a wedding. I will go and handle it. And one thing that if you've worked food service, if you're releasing tables, you should know how the flow of a line works. And if you've done it, you can make sure that you keep the line moving adequately without making too many people stand up and wait in that. And that that's the that's the thing. It's the hard part. It's it's always, always, always a hard thing to do when you're asked, you know, hey, go in the microphone. It's always a quick way. It's not always the best way. And I, again, I'm blessed to have Tracy with me that she goes and she releases the table. And again, you got a chance to work with Tracy. You saw how hands-on she is for his coordination side, which makes life much easier. So I'm going to go around the table here and ask a quick question. Uh, it's a yes or no question like we have usually. I'm going to start with our guest, DJ, the Moose. I'm going to ask you, do you go up to the tables and release them or you release them over a microphone when you have a buffet or so forth? Well, uh, microphone. Microphone? I had to use the microphone to release them. I had a, I did a wedding one time and it was a, pardon my French, it was a shit show. It was a mess. Um, I didn't release anybody and what happened was everybody decided to go eat while the bridal party was taking pictures it was just a mess and then um, I did my best to try and stop it but nobody was listening to it I guess I was the the, um, the gargoyle in the room <laughs> you, you know in that same, I've noticed you, a few years ago when I didn't get fully done up for a wedding, and you tell people you'll be handling the you know the tables, they don't listen. But now that I show up in a formal, complete, you know, two or three piece, super polished up shoes and looking the part of host MC like Mitch Taylor and Mark Farrell will definitely pound into you. It changes the light and perspective everybody looks at you in. And once you make your introductions, you know, like, hey, everybody, I'm Brett Lee, I'm your DJ, blah, 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 blah. If you do that in a very credible and confident manner, you have just made sure that they will listen to you the rest of the night. But, and even if I did it correctly three or four years ago, just wearing a shirt and a tie, the outward appearance and response I got was entirely different. Hmm. And that's 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 the, that's the thing is that being professional when you walk up to the table, uh, again looking the part as well as playing the part is always important. So I'm going to go to Jeff in North Carolina. Do you usually go up to the table and release the table, or do you use a microphone to release the table? Uh, I use a mic. Yeah, I mean it's usually you know people want to hear you know when their number is called or you know the the, the other people that are waiting for their number they want to hear that and you know when am I going to get up there to eat you know or or get in line so yeah I, I use a mic and I don't make it like really loud it's usually while some dinner music is, music is playing so uh, make it quick and simple but yeah I use a mic okay Dwayne what about you what do you do I use the mic okay. So I guess, I guess Bradley and I are the, the minorities. <laughs> it, 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 I, I just sometimes just feel like, you know, uh, the mic, it can be, feel like it's a um, a bingo hall, B12. You know, you know, it's that kind of, that kind of feel sometimes. So that that's, that's, and plus again, I, I'm blessed to have Tracy have another person there, which is nice to have someone who can go up there and she can monitor and make sure it, the table's released and not, you know, table next door going up and do it. You still get it here and there. Some people just don't want to pay attention, don't care. They're all about them. They will go up there anyways and do whatever they want to do. She's not going to tackle them. I'm not going to tackle them. That's not our jobs. But the thing is that, you know, I, I, you know, I also feel that, you know, it, it just sometimes can distract from what's going on and, and make it more of a kind of a spectacle. Uh, but again, everyone does things differently. That's why I, this, is, this is why we're here. Because everyone, there's different thoughts and ways of doing things. I'm sure what my thought is doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just mean I'm wrong. Just means the way I do it. Um, and that's the thing you you can't just do things one way. 
there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they always say. Uh, a couple things here also. Uh, Mike's saying a lot of things here. DJ Staples, welcome, welcome, welcome. And also, uh, let's see here. 99% uh, of the venues in northeastern Pennsylvania do not re require a DJ to release tables. There you go. Uh, many of the DJs have a sign with their company name while DJing a wedding. See, I don't like that. I know Matt has his name on his computer. I know some guys have names on the computers. I don't have anything on my computers. Um, and I, I don't have any signage or that. I'm just not a I'm not a fan for that. I've seen guys with tablecloths or names on and stuff like that. I just feel again, you're you're there, you want classy, you know, they, they want to know who you are to come out, ask for a business card, boom, you can give a business card very quickly. Uh that's just my personal opinion. But again, everybody does what they feel it's best for their business. Um Let's see here. We got uh, to go to tables. You're not announcing is a uh, as a cashier is ready. Uh, LOL. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, don't say cat around a dog. LOL. That they're saying after your dog there, Brentley. <laughs> and then uh, um, boing boing table number two, please. Yeah, yeah. It it it, it, it could it, it can go into that. Uh, but hopefully, I know that. Both Dwayne and uh, Jeff are very professional. I'm sure they are very classy when they do it, and they're not, uh, uh, as well as uh, Terry, they're they're not going to uh, make it sound like it's, uh, uh, again, a used car lot or something like that. Now to the next comment, next question for the table. Uh, this is from DJ Aga from YouTube. Um, he has a question for the table. Uh, fog machines, is it worth investing now? I really soon got turned down for a wedding because I did not offer dancing on a cloud in a package. Do you actually get many uh, requests uh, at all uh, for fog or haze? Uh, many venues do not allow it. Are you still seeing a downward trend request for fog or haze? And oh, go Bills in 2024. Uh, as you know, uh, DJ Aga is in the... Uh, New York area, and he is really excited about the uh, Bills going uh, hard for the uh, playoffs. So we'll see this coming weekend what happens with them. I thought they lost already. Well, I'm sorry, what? I thought they lost already. <laughs> I thought it's Kansas City and Baltimore. I yep, they did, but we'll see. We'll see what goes on because I'm getting he's going hard for the Bills. Yep, it is Kansas City, but yeah, you know, we'll see what happens this weekend. You know, with everything what's going on, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting to say the least. You know, we freeze. Oh, there we go. A little lag spike there. Gotta love the internet. You always gotta love that lag spike. Um, so uh, let's see here, DJ Eater E. No request for dancing in the clouds here for me. So he has not gotten it. Fog machines are touchy with a venue. Uh, you have to watch what you, uh, your insurance uh, says, and that's an important thing as well. A lot of venues I know will not allow uh, fog machines because of fire suppression equipment. And then you have to hire a uh, you know someone from the fire department to do a fire watch. They got turned the system off, and it's it's kind of a little bit of a pain in the rear end. So, um, so dancing in the cloud, I'm not a fan for it because it wets the floor because you're actually using steam. Kind of uh, that fog coming out is dry ice and hot water causes a fog, and it can make the floor slick. I, I'm not a fan for that. I know a lot of DJs do it just like sparklers. I'm not a fan for them. Uh, but again, everybody does different things. Everybody has to look at their business different ways. Is it a thing I would invest in? I haven't had a fog machine in years. And if someone doesn't want to go to another DJ service because they offer it, okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, that's that's the thing is that, you know, I'm very upfront with my customers when I explain my services. So I'm going to go to uh, beautiful North Carolina there with Jeff. Jeff, fog machine, yes, no, maybe so? No to fog. Uh, that's outdated. I just don't use those anymore. Most places uh, have banned them or do not allow them. Few that do, you know, you're either outside where wind's blowing, it's not going to be effective. Um, I do not offer um, haze. 
Uh, it's just, you know, it's just too, some places don't, they have to be educated on what haze is. Um, so I just, I just don't offer it. And dancing on the cloud is way cost prohibitive for my type of clientele. So I do not offer that. Um, so yeah, that's just where I am. You, does anybody know what Nimbus is running right now? I, I can't remember last night. Price couple grand. I think it's a couple grand or more to yeah, get the it, full system. Yeah, it, it, and you gotta go get dry ice, drop dry ice into it. Dry, gotta get the pallets. You can't get the sheets. You gotta get the pallets, and it, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, okay. you, you need an assistant. I mean, it, it, you've got to have somebody to run that while you're DJing. It's it's impossible almost to do that by yourself. Well, Jeff, the lucky thing you got some assistance some, once in a while too. So <laughs> built-in <laughs> assistance. One is uh, fourteen, one's uh, sixteen. So <laughs> yeah, they, they they want to have their video games. They want to have their allowance. You know, hey, you know, they right. they got work for it. <laughs> So I'm going to go to our other Southern DJ in beautiful Texas. Terry, do you use, offer fog machines, haze, or dancing in the cloud? Okay. So here you go. I do backyards. Uh, a lot of backyard weddings. Um, there are 19 venues that I go to on a regular basis, and all of them are old 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 wooden barns and when you walk in the barn the first thing they say is no fire fireworks or fog machines allowed so um everywhere i go they're like old school barns there's hay around so i'm not going to be bringing no any kind of like that um i had bought a haze machine and i had it and i was going to use it for a wedding that i had and I couldn't even find the dry ice. So I just, I, I told the couple and they're like, they were down about it, but I gave them the refund on that part. But I, I sold it quick because I couldn't find dry ice. So I, just don't, I don't fool with that stuff. Okay. Let's try to fix something real quickly. There we go. Uh, okay. So you don't fool with a fog machine or anything like that. Tommy. No, it just gets. Okay. Tommy. What about you in uh, your travels? Are you uh, contemplating adding a fog machine or you want to do dancing in the cloud or what, 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 any kind of atmosphere or anything? Uh, I don't offer fog or uh, dancing on the cloud. I do offer CO2. Um, I have a CO2 cannon, a uh, handheld gun. And uh, I, I've noticed it's especially popular with um, – uh, I've gotten booked for a school dance that's coming up in February, and uh, that's something that's included in that package. And then uh, I did a couple private parties this summer that were more like uh, graduation type parties where it was like a backyard type thing. And uh, I had multiple people that wanted that addition to the setup, and uh, it was it was a big hit. Uh, when I first bought that CO2 gun, my parents were actually joking with me about how you're never going to use this. Who's going to want to use this? And I've actually been able to add it to packages a couple times as an a la carte option. So it's, it's paid for itself for sure. Okay. So that's something that you're doing. And then uh, what, what do you see you're expanding to? Do you think you're going to add sparklers? Do you think you're going to add more stuff to it? Or what do you think you're doing in the future? Uh, maybe, maybe sparks. It would, I, I think of all the effects, Sparks would potentially be the one that uh, I could see myself adding the setup. But I, honestly, I think the biggest thing that I'd like to add would be uh, uplighting uh, rather than some of those like atmospheric event uh, effects. Because uh, a lot of venues I've noticed don't want uh, fog, haze. Um, CO2 I haven't run into any problems with because that doesn't trigger any fire alarms because it dissipates immediately. Um but uh, sparklers, too, I, I could see that causing a potential problem. So, I don't know. I might stay away from that. Okay. So, DJ Brantley, what about you? Do you use haze, fog, smoke, dance in the cloud, anything like that? Yes. Uh, sparks, most definitely. And of all the higher-end add-ons, that's my number one seller. I think I've got four of them this year. I mean, it's not a big seller. And I just want, you know... One of the weddings I have coming up this year originally asked if I could get them. And so I made a Facebook post. And a bunch of people chimed in. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm going to order this. Order that, order Dancing on the Clouds. And 
you know, six of one, half of the dozen of the other, I don't really need them. It's nice to be able to offer that to couples. But on the downside of it, again, because of some of these great videos we've seen on TikTok and some really uneducated DJs, Sparks, you got to be, I'm I'm allowed to use them, but they won't let other DJs use them at like celebrations or card games. Uh, celebrations, you can you can use a hazer provided it's water based. You cannot use a smoke machine. Uh, Dancing on the clouds has to be dry ice or you know a combination of water and dry ice. So more and more, I'm just not. I have it if someone wants it, as long as the venue's cool with it, I'm down. Otherwise, they can sit in my garage and depreciate. All right, there you go. Got some uh, chat here, some stuff here in the chat. Got a lot of people talking, so we got to answer the chat here. Um, DJ Mike and Mike says, same with Cool Sparks. You have to have a firefighter present at the event, which uh, DJ must pay for uh, them to be there. He thinks it's like $2,500. I think he's talking about the uh, the actual Nimbus itself. And he said, no, Nimbus is 1500 It was over $1,000. Before uh DJ Fire is in the chat. DJ Fire, good to see you, sir. Uh, I know you're busy with everything going on. Um, he does use a phaser. Uh, there are only a few places you can't use them in his central Illinois area. Uh, most places don't care about fog or haze, and it, the fog and haze helps make the dance lights, lasers look better, which is true. A atmosphere will make it, you know, look cooler. You see the beams of the laser and beams of the light, which is really cool. But, you know, it's, it's one of the things also, the other thing is that you got to think about is people who have asthma or other respiratory problems, it could aggravate them. And then it opens you up. Are you liable for them if they have a medical problem? So Dwayne, what about you? Do you use fog, haze, smoke, uh, dance in the cloud, sparklers, anything like that? I haven't used fog in so long. I used to use it because of, you know, just like what DJ Fire said, it makes the lasers and everything look nice. But I only bought that because when I was trying to go from, you know, the bedroom DJ into trying to be mobile, I was on YouTube and I was like seeing everybody have it. I was like, I must get it. That's the only reason I got it. But of lately, I have not had to use it because the lights I use really don't need that. So... I offer the fog, but dancing on the clouds, the guy that got me into doing weddings, he did, I went out with them and he did dancing on the clouds a couple of times. And I was like, that seemed like that was more of a hassle. And for <laughs> it to not look like um, the way that you see in the pictures where it's real, like they look like they're on the cloud. It's like he did all the prep work, but with the wind blowing the, um, you know, the clouds around, it was like a whole bunch of empty space, and I didn't see where that would be worth it. So I don't mess with it. It was like Matt is having some more technical problems, and um, you know, it, it's it's one of the things that Dance in the Cloud. I, I, you you seen him use it? You see how difficult it is. You got to bring the unit in there dry. You got to have a five gallon bucket. You got to fill up a hot water into it. So you got to go to a sink that has hot water. Fill up a five gallon bucket. Take it over there. At least I, I was a one or two five gallon buckets of water. Got to fill it up. Turn it on. It has a heater to come on heat the water at a certain temperature, basically, I, I think it's like right below boiling. So you have this hot water sitting there that people could trip over, which is a tripping hazard. Then you got wheel it out there. Hopefully no one runs into you where you're wheeling out there because it's low to the ground. And then you got to drop the dry ice. You got to keep the dry ice, uh, you know, either. But you can't have a sealed container because even a sealed container, it turns into a gas. What does gas do? It expands. It'll pop mm. the top. So if you put it in a cooler... You don't want to dip your head in there because carbon monoxide, you pass out. So you don't want to do that. So there's a lot of hazards to this. And the more I look at, you know, a, uh, you know, a Nimbus and stuff like that, that's, it's, it's just to me, like you said before, the hassle of doing it is very heavy. And that's the question of even a fog machine, you know, you go to, you know, a Halloween store, you buy a fog machine. Again, it does look cool. The light looks cool and stuff like that. But you have something that heats up, it's hot, you got to clean it. You don't clean it because I have fog machine. I didn't clean, went to go use it again. It was clogged and it, it burned up a half throw, it, basically throw it away. And you have to clean that thing, you know, religiously. It, it, it's, 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 it can be a hassle. 
So those are the things you got to look at is what you want to do, how deep you want to go in something. So I got to ask Matt because Matt has been in and out because of some technical difficulties. Matt, fog machines, haze machines, sparklers, and also dance on the cloud. Do you do it? What do you think of it? Do you think it's a, 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 a trend that's going away or do you think it's a trend that stays? We do it all. It wasn't technical difficulties. My my car was being washed. We have a car wash service at this apartment too, by the way. Uh, uh, nice little uh, perk, but uh, it's not free though. You have to pay for that. But um, yeah, for some reason, every time I try to connect to the meeting for my laptop, the audio is not coming through on your end, on my end, on either end. But anyway, um, yeah, we do. Uh, we do all of it. Um, I do cold sparks like almost every wedding. It seems like now um, the venues here are pretty chill about it. Uh, most of them know what they are. The only ones that you run into issues with are usually like the the city owned ones because if it's a city ordinance that doesn't allow even the safe and sane fireworks on Fourth of July, then they're not going to allow sparklers. Uh, all the privately owned ones don't usually have a problem with it. Some of the bigger ones, you can get them to pay for fire watch, so they'll have a marshal or whoever come in and. For five or six hundred bucks, they'll just stay and disable all the alarms. So you can use fog, you can use haze, you can use whatever you want. So if they, I have a couple, a few couples that really want the laser package, and I told them like we need to use haze for the lasers, and so they contacted their hotel and got the fire watch. So we're good to go for that. So uh, I always bring a fog machine. I mean, not always, but I tend to most of the time bring a fog machine because I'd like to use it if we can. Uh, if not, no big deal. Um, I prefer a hazer because it looks better, but uh, my hazer is also a arena size hazer that's in a flight case, so it's not as portable as the fog machine where I could just throw it in the car. But uh, I think haze makes everything look better, um, especially when you, <clears throat> when you have an oil based hazer, it looks even better. And uh, use it as much as we can. We do CO two, we do dancing on a cloud. Those those I never have any is issues with at all. Any venue. Like CO2, they're pretty knowledgeable that it dissipates instantly, or if it's the dancing on a cloud, it stays to the ground, so it won't set off the alarms. Um, yeah, so the more uh, the more we can upsell, the better. I hate doing the dancing on a cloud because uh, I don't hate it. It's just a, a lot of factors can go wrong with that machine. Uh, you have to heat it up right if somebody unplugs it or trips over it, like, and you get unplugged and you're you don't see it, and all of a sudden first dance is five minutes away and it's not hot there's nothing you could do um if your dry ice isn't doesn't stay cold that's another problem if the places don't have dry ice that's another huge issue luckily we have a bunch of ice houses that stock it year round because smart and final uh only usually stocks it during the uh halloween and summertime so uh that's the that's the only that's the thing i don't mind charging like 400 bucks for because like it stresses me out but yeah. Okay. So you use it and you find success at it. So DJ Fire says that uh, if the wedding party wants haze, uh, I will work with the bride and groom. And there is days uh, if they want fog and the venue allows it, then we'll use it. Uh, and for an off brand Nimitz, it's only $600. So, and he put a link in the chat down below, which I will copy that link. And put it on no, YouTube so you have do, it. Do not get an off-brand Nimbus. I did, and it did not work. Those oh. those are not made well. Um, that's the one thing I will be firm on. I tried two different ones. Neither one stayed hot. Neither one got hot. And neither one produced the same cloud when it finally did get hot after two and a half a hours. Nimbus. Did not produce. That's that's Chave, the one thing Chave I'm does a good on. One. I tried. Again, I guess, I, you tried. And, I guess you and Fire had to do this one out because he's got There's, uh, there's nothing... Here. You know me. I always try to find a Chinese special oh, effects for cheaper if I can. That's the only thing that I'm like, nope, nothing comes close <laughs> to the Nimbus. Well, I know you go directly to China and get lights, so it, it's it's one of the things I know yeah. you do that. I got so, a Chinese Nimbus. I got two of them. They both t they both sucked. No, uh, there you go, and they're for sale now, right? Yeah, yeah. Get a get a get a regular Nimbus. You can find used Nimbus or Nimbi for like seven eight hundred bucks usually. Um, I, I've seen them go as high as like nine or a thousand though. Those things do hold their value really well. So if you have one Nimbus, it's a Nimbi. If you have a multiple Nimbuses, it's Nimbuses. So we're they're like uh, animals almost, you know. <laughs> uh oh, DJ Fire's coming in here. Shots fired across the bow. <laughs> He's gonna have the last couple minutes here. 
Nathan's going to come in and he's going to shoot back on that one right there. He's He's got to say what he's got to say. Go ahead, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know me, I got two. So, um, hold on. Why is my camera not flipping? We got issues. Hold on. All right. Well, then we'll do. No, oh, no, it's flipping. It, now you're upside down. <laughs> it's not. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. A lot of technical problems today. It's the internet. Let me turn some better lighting on here. All right. So, um, I know a lot of you people buy lighting from different companies. Those of you that like Chave, I like Chave. I like ADJ. I like Sheds. Uh, Eliminator Lighting is out there. I don't have Eliminator Lighting. Uh, what's some other companies that are out there? Um, uh, Hold Lamp, um, B Topper. Um, I will say I've done my research on some of this stuff. Color Key. And there color is key. a company in Wong Tong, China that makes all these lights. They make them for Chave. They make them for ADJ. That's why a lot of companies, like the video that you will see coming out on DJ Fire tomorrow, the videos that come out on my product review channel, a lot of the products look identical because they're made the exact same way. They have a little spot where a sticker goes that that company that buys that product from them can put their logo on there and say, hey, this is ours. We developed this. We bought this. Uh, no, you didn't. Somebody else bought it. You put your name on it, and you say it's yours, just like Sheds does. Just I know Sheds does this a lot. Um, the Beam 230 actually is a mimic off of a Chave light, which was I have found out is made in the exact same warehouse. Because um, no matter what Beam 237R you're looking at, they all got the same gobos. They all got the same colors. They all got the same effects. They all do the same thing. Same thing with your low-lying fog machines. So there's one from Chave that's a little tiny one. It's called like the Cool Cool Mist or Cool Something um, that you put ice in it. It blows the fog across it. It kills it, and it keeps it low. Mr. I had a cool. couple of bigger that version of it. Do what? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cool is what it's called. That thing is just yeah, as Mr. Cool. Thank you. Okay. I couldn't think of it off the top of my head. But so Wait, isn't, I Mr. Got company, isn't Mr. Cool an air conditioning system too and a furnace and stuff? Yeah, there's no there's yes, no trademark on it anymore. It is it's like it's like Mickey. So I will say this: if you guys go on my, I believe it's on my lawn care channel and on my product review channel, there is a chainsaw called the Holz Pharma G660. That is a clone saw from the Steel G660. Steel's patent got released off of their chainsaw. Chinese repatented it under them, took all the information. They were able to get all the specs, everything off of it, cloned it, re-trademarked it as Holes Pharma, and sell it for $300. You know how much Steel wants for theirs? $1,600. Oh, now, wow. this is a chainsaw that, can, that will hold up to a four-foot bar. So you can buy the exact same saw. That if you if you have a part go bad, you can go to a steel dealer and get the part from steel, put it on this saw. It's kind of like how DJ equipment is. I mean, speakers and well, not all speakers. I know that RCF. If you put an RCF and a JBL next to each other, I'm pretty sure RCF is going to blow JBL out of the water. And I'm not just saying that because Matt's watching me, but I'm just from from what I've been told. Um, but I just you know a lot of people say that this product's better than this product when all in all they're all made in like that. It's basically like say this moving head up here and the moving head that's in that closet are two different brands. I guarantee they're both made at the exact same warehouse on a different table, maybe at two different ends of the warehouse. And then they just put their own name like sheds, their sticker, their, their name is a sticker. I can literally pull that sticker off and then it won't say sheds anymore. Chave actually engraves their name on their stuff, which is cool. That kind of is, is better than a sticker because their sticker falls off all the time. But um, same thing with the new B-topper movers we got. Uh, the B-topper sticker kept falling off. Um, so I know I've had two different 7Rs, and I tell you the truth, they were identical. Now, there is a 7R video coming out on my channel tomorrow because I was asked to do a video on both of my channels. So I'm following through with my obligations. But... Um, there's, you know, 
it's just you know that that's my opinion it might be your different opinion in your no and again that's that's uh, why that's that's why we have multiple opinions on here because again matt is very amy he's like the you know the the nimbus is the only way to go and you're like hey the the knockoff nimbus it, it actually works pretty well and that's different yeah. testimony different ideas different thoughts if everyone thought the same way we wouldn't have this show with that I said got, we, i've got one of the cheap nimbus coming so I'll put it to the test and I'll let you know my yeah. truth because you, you know got, I do you not lie do about these products. If Please, crappy, do. Please do. Please do. It's, it's coming directly from China, so it's going to take a little bit to get here. But uh, once it gets here, I don't even know if they've shipped it yet. They just messaged me about three days ago. So Well, um, we'll, we'll keep eye on your, uh, your channels and make sure that uh, we, we get it. And when you have it on there, we'll uh, make sure to get you back on here and give a report on how it goes. So with that said, I know it's already been an hour and I greatly appreciate you guys all for being here. And again, thank you, Terry, for coming in tonight. Hopefully we'll have you back on here yet again. Tommy, as always, great to have you on here. One of the original members of the DJ Roundtable who is back from back when we were back on, uh, on Instagram. That was always a hard time with just the four of us. And uh, as always, everyone else here, thank you all for being here. Jeff, Dwayne, Brettley. DJ Fire, Nathan, Matt, Solsis, and everyone else. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Be safe, and we'll see you next week. And, Mike, I see your question. We're going to leave it for next week. So with that said, you guys have a wonderful evening. I do. Thanks. And will you take me out, Tommy? Thank you guys for uh, checking into the DJ Roundtable this week, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. Stop. Peace. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>